Hi, it's Christina with the Sisyphean Journal. Today's July 22nd, and I'm going to link below to an anniversary I already covered. But today I want to draw two threads together, one I've spoken about before and one I haven't spoken about before. I have spoken before about the fact that the abortion fanatics are trying to get a vulnerable pregnant woman killed in order to achieve abortion on demand. Um, and if we look at what California, New York, and I think Virginia uh, put on the books, not merely abortion, but if the baby survives, just wrap it in a towel and let it die um, because it's supposed to be a dead baby, not a live one. And I need to kind of review how abortion was legalized in Ireland. And the way they achieved that was by letting a vulnerable pregnant woman die and then blaming it on pro-life laws. And the woman in question was named Savita. And I'm not going to try to pronounce her last name because I'm going to butcher it. This woman doesn't deserve to be to having her name butchered. Uh, this young woman was um, having a miscarriage. It's the same situation that we saw with Rick Santorum's wife. The ruptured membranes, infection in the amniotic fluid, her life was in danger. Now, with Rick Santorum, he and his wife had a pro-life doctor, a doctor who valued both lives equally. And that doctor indicated, look, there's, there's nothing we can do. The longer she remains pregnant, the greater the risk that she's going to die. There's nothing we can do to save your baby. I'm sorry. Administered antibiotics to prevent the infection from spreading and killing the mother and delivered the baby alive so that he could be held and cuddled and comforted by his parents in his last moments. Savita was in exactly the same situation. But instead of providing her with antibiotics and inducing labor to end the pregnancy that was threatening her life, and you have to understand pro-lifers have nothing against ending pregnancies. Pregnancies tend to end on their own at around 40 weeks. We have a problem with deliberately killing the occupant of the uterus. Um, this doctor admitted her to the hospital with an infection and did not administer any antibiotics. And Reportedly, Savita and her husband had asked for the pregnancy to be ended because she was in so much pain, and there would have been no reason, even under the very strict pro-life Irish law, there was no reason to not end this life-threatening pregnancy. You, in, you First, you administer plenty of antibiotics. You get that woman on IV antibiotics because you don't want to risk this infection spreading and you induce labor and you let her hold and cuddle and comfort her baby as he unfortunately dies. It was legal in Ireland that doctor could have chosen to do that, but instead he chose to say that he can't do anything until the baby's heart stops because Ireland is a Catholic country. There was nothing that would have prevented him from administering antibiotics to this young woman. Even if he did not choose to induce labor, he still could have administered antibiotics, and he chose not to, and this resulted in the young woman's death. And the abortion advocates used that to claim that he was not permitted to save her life because of abortion laws. Okay, so you get that. It was an absolute lie. There was no nothing in the law that would have prevented him from administering life-saving antibiotics. He chose not to administer the life-saving antibiotics. There's absolutely no reason they could not have induced labor to end this life-threatening pregnancy. He did not induce labor to end the life-threatening pregnancy. Instead, he simply said, I'm not allowed to dismember your baby and let her die. And we recently had a situation in the United States where it looks to me like they were trying to create an American Savita. And this was a woman in Idaho, okay, um, a young woman named Nicole Miller, who 20 weeks into her pregnancy was hemorrhaging. She was suffering from what's called placental abruption. That's when the placenta starts to separate while the baby is still in the womb. Now, the proper treatment, perfectly allowable under Idaho law. Um, if you look at the um, Evangelum Vitae put out by the Catholic Church prior to Pope Francis coming aboard, 
um, you are allowed to end a pregnancy to save the mother's life. And in this case, Nicole's baby was doomed. Everybody knew Nicole's baby was doomed. You had placental abruption. She was hemorrhaging. Her life was in danger. The appropriate treatment at that point, perfectly legal treatment at that point, would be to keep her there in the hospital, where if you need to, you could administer transfusions. Keep her there in the hospital, where if you need to, you can perform emergency surgery, and then you induce labor to end this life-threatening pregnancy. And the result would have been that her sad little doomed baby would have died in his mother's arms being held and comforted and loved. And instead they chose to endanger her by putting her in a plane, taking her away from a hospital, taking her away from the ability to perform transfusions, taking her away from the ability to perform immediate emergency surgery if necessary. They removed her from an environment where her life could quickly be saved put her in a dangerous situation to fly her to Utah to dismember her baby instead of letting him die held and cuddled and loved and comforted in his mother's arms. Okay? This was an attempt on her life. This was an attempt to let a woman die like that doctor let Savita die. And the pressure among pro-abortion doctors to create a corpse before the election is going to be ramped up now, okay? Trump is surging in the polls because somebody tried to shoot him and he bounced back and is showing incredible courage. I think the courage he showed wasn't the day of the rally when he bounced back up and the adrenaline was still running. The courage was when he went to the RNC, went back into public in front of of a crowd again where somebody could be out there with a gun and try to shoot him. Abortion is the leverage that the Democrats are going to try to use to defeat Donald Trump. They don't like him, not because he's an insurrectionist, not because he's Hitler, but because he wants to drain the swamp. Okay. So we got the swamp monsters and the pro-abortion people, and you draw a Venn diagram, there's a lot of overlap between the swamp creatures and the abortion advocates. They're going to try to get a woman killed quickly. They need her to die prior to the election so that they can try to hang her corpse around Donald Trump's neck. They are going to continue to endanger vulnerable pregnant women. And first of all, I am calling out to the pro-life movement. We need to have a unified message that, first of all, these laws have a life of the mother exception that they don't actually need because you're allowed to terminate the pregnancy. There's no logical reason to stop and take extra steps when this woman's life is in danger to do additional things to kill the baby first before you end this life-threatening pregnancy. What these abortion advocates want to do is delay the termination of the pregnancy in order to achieve fetal death. You need to wrap your heads around that. They want to delay terminating the pregnancy so they can terminate the life of the fetus. It's hard to believe that people are that evil, but they are. Okay? The pro-lifers need to have a unified message that if you have a doctor who is telling you he cannot provide treatment to you in pregnancy because of some anti-abortion law, that doctor is either grossly misinformed or that doctor is lying. You need to contact either the American Association of Pro-Life OBGYNs or you need to contact your local pro-life pregnancy center so they can get you to a doctor who is going to provide you with care. And if you don't have time to do that, you need to go to an emergency room. They are trying to get a woman killed. They've got until November 4th, uh, sorry, November 5th, to get that woman killed. They are working on it. They're working on it hard. They have all of their publicity materials ready like they did when Savita died. They're ready for it. We, first of all, just because we don't want the woman to die, but second of all, we don't want people that evil to be in charge. People who are willing to kill the very pregnant women that supposedly they are there to protect. 
we need to get the word out. If a doctor is saying he cannot provide care because of an anti-abortion law, that doctor is either misinformed or lying. This is happening because the abortion swamp creatures need a dead woman to win the election. Don't let them do it.